Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. Uh, we always say it every episode. It's been a big year. We've had some great guests. I can't thank you all enough for coming along to each episode. If you are new here, welcome. Uh, please give us a like and subscribe to our show. It's how we grow. And for all the regulars that are coming back, you guys are the absolute heartbeat of our podcast. Now, today, we've been wanting this man on the show for a while. He's a hospitality mogul. He's a former athlete. He's done some high-level modeling. More importantly, he's an absolute legend of a bloke with a super interesting uh, story with so many gems in there today. So uh, absolutely keen to introduce Nick Rush. And thank you, mate, for coming on the show. I swear I would have written that myself. <laughs> wow. What an, what an honor. <laughs> mate, it's um, it's pretty cool to have you on because you, I've, I've known of you for, for a long time with, I guess, the the work you've been doing in the hospitality space for the last 20 odd years across Melbourne. It's, it's made some waves and obviously I'm keen to dig a bit deeper today into a bit more about the person behind all that. But I actually do have a bit of a story about you and your brother, because I want to go into this. I think you might I think I think you might know this. So yeah. for for those obviously Nick and Dan, they've been partnering for for a long time, brothers, uh, the Russian brothers. But when I came to Bar Bambi, which we're gonna go into, and for those that haven't been in Melbourne or or have been in Melbourne and haven't gone to Bar Bambi, you have to check it out. It's an incredible bar and we'll go into it. But I came came late on a Thursday one night and you and your brother were eating dinner. Oh yeah. And I sat at your table. <laughs> And because I always wondered, I'm like, what separates you from every other restaurant or yeah. stuff like that? And yeah. we sat down and you guys had your food and some wine. And I just remember Dan like looking, he goes, it's a bit lukewarm this. Yeah. And then you, you spoke to one of the waiters and said, don't you think it's better when the wine's closer? So then we can serve <laughs> instead of over there and so meticulous. And it's like, it reminded me of the McDonald's brothers yeah. when they were very meticulous with their operation. Yeah, OCD can be, uh, OCD. It, can, it can be your best friend, but it can be your worst friend as well. <laughs> you know, like it's just, it's, um, it's, it's eye for detail. It's eye for detail. There's so many moving parts of, <clears throat> of the hospitality space. You know, yeah. there's, there's so many moving parts and, sound like a wanker, but it's all those little one percenters that all add up to making the place an enjoyable experience um, that makes the place somewhere that other people want to come back to, that people walk away going, geez, that was a great time, you yeah. know, so... Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I see, I see. What the fuck was that? Now I get it. OCD, now I get OCD, it. Huh? We're, we're like, from we're from bloodlines of OCD, <laughs> mate. Yeah. So you can't grow out of it. Oh well, well. More recently, you've just been. I'm keen to understand how your trip was to Japan because cool. a lot of people love Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah mate, tell me about it. it. What a what a place. What a place. We um, well, we went there for what nine nine nights. My wife and my. Our, I'm not mine, our children. And, um, mate, we're a bit worried that the kids are going to be bored going to a, a metropolis because with kids, I know you don't have kids as yet, being the young, uh, young strapping lad that you are, um, they're, they're, they're constantly on the go. So we thought, you know what? Is it going to be one of those holidays where like, Jesus Christ, Dad, get us to the, um, get us to the beach, get us to this. But, um, mate, they, they walked away from it and said they had the best holiday ever. There was just plenty to do for them. The overall culture shock, the, the enormity of mm. the place, the bright lights. Mm. And, um, you know, we also made sure that we, you know, we had some, some key things sort of scheduled in for the kids as well, which was uh, which was good. You know, Harry Potter world, oh. and Nintendo world, and all the rest. Yeah. You would have probably liked that. No, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Harry Potter world, yeah, yeah, they've got that there. Yeah, they got all that. They got all that. Is so, that in Tokyo? Uh, that's in Osaka. So, oh, Osaka. Um, so yeah, mate. So, so we had a great time. Um, you know, the hours that I work is just relentless. So any time at school holidays. We make sure that we book something in, we get away and we spend just some good quality time with the uh, with the kids because there's no use just working your entire life and then not yeah. spending time with them. It's it's a pointless exercise otherwise, isn't it? So what are you covering now work-wise? Because you're always kind of moving across multiple things, multiple yeah. projects, but yeah. what, what are you covering now overall? The, the major focus for me right now is still working on Bambi. We're involved, when I say we, my brother and I and then my wife as well, we're involved across a number of different um businesses and industries with my wife obviously she's um she's heavily involved in the online space with mm. uh with her social media but designing and selling product online <clears throat> um my brother and i have our uh recruitment labor hire business that we've had for about 10 years mm. that's been going really well thankfully yeah. and then um we've got our events business as well that we do our little mini dance parties and things with and then we have bar bambi and yeah, that's our, that's, that's my major focus. Um, we're, we're what, a bit over 18 months old coming into, coming up to two years. 
And still there's so many little things that need to be continually tweaked because going back years ago, I had a, a successful venue named Eve uh, Eve Bar oh, for 10 years. One of the greatest. Were, were you there? Were you oh, around there? I wasn't sure I was, if you're still in nappies into, back I was, there. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. I was playing soccer into state, yeah. but away trips, so playing in Melbourne. Yeah. Eve, yeah, every that was, time. that was the spot. So it's a hard place to get into. It was you need to be place. rubbing shoulders. It was with a difficult the spot, but we, we did well there for 10 years and we had some other venues, Adam and other businesses off the back of that. And we, we pretty much sold everything up um, once we had our kids. And um, so basically coming into Bambi, we were starting from scratch again. So back to basics of, you know, you're filling out all your own forms. It, it sounds silly. I've, I've, I get asked this question quite a bit, but, you know, filling out your own forms again. Um, you can be spending hours stuffing around with basic admin work, you know, all that boring stuff initially that needs to be done. Yeah. I always talk about the opportunity costs. You can be working on that or you can actually be working on the business. So coming into this business, we um, yeah, we're doing all the real basic monotonous um, work from the beginning until we had enough cash flow coming through. Then you put on a staff member and you tweak some things and then you put on another staff member in another particular area and you tweak some things and you look at another area that needs to be fixed and then you put another staff member on. So these first couple of years of the business is really about um, a lot of tweaking and um, and uh, hiring and training mm. so uh, you can then down on the business and focus on just tweaking each person's role versus being stuck in the business and working every minute of your life. But yeah, but the the big focus now still within those first two years is just getting that team infrastructure right, which we're almost there. I think in the next few months we'll be at the, um, we'll finally be there. And then once that's exactly where we want it to be, then you can start growing and looking at other venues and everything else. So so always your, so you like chaos. Uh, you you need chaos. do you, do you feel you need that to I, like get the most out of yourself or enjoy life? And not chaos, it's but good, just like multiple things to keep your brain ticking it's a, and interested. It's a good question because at times you go, Oh bloody hell, why am I doing yeah. this? I'm sending myself absolutely nuts. But then when you're not doing it, I'm like, oh you know, I'm a, I'm, exactly. a, I'm a pretty energetic person, like your good self. Yeah. So you so I I need that continual uh rush or or drive to be you know, to keep you to keep you going, to yeah. keep, keep your your highly strung mind uh, at ease. It's almost like an identity um, crisis because you need it for your own identity and your sort of self kind of confidence and getting the best out of yourself. But at the same time, you're like it's fucking you're creating carnage. You like to, <laughs> you like to push yourself, but yeah, yeah. There, there are times you go, all right, time to hit the brakes, and and you know during those times, and it's then it's like okay, well, let's have a holiday, refresh, recharge, and then you yeah. come back and go again into carnage. So. One of, one of the things I've noticed as well, because I, I, to be honest, I've I come to Barbambi a lot. I absolutely love it there, and it's humming at the moment. Thank you, mate. Um, cool. But the staff, staff are great, and I always think from I never look at it from from your perspective, but you just mentioned it, like around hiring. Yeah. When you go through that process for you, what are sort of critical indicators to bring someone on board? Because by the sound of it, you have an emphasis on training them up. Yeah. So is it a people aspect you're looking at? What's the sort of box tickers? I think that. <laughs> Most training comes from being side by side a good mentor. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And you're just sitting there and observing somebody all the time, um, being next to them, seeing how they talk, seeing what they do. There's just so many one percenters, again, as I referred to before, that um, you need to see and observe over and over again until the penny drops with that person. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, or am okay. I crapping on? No, no, no. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. 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 So if you have good key personnel, mm-hmm. good key personnel, you know, the, the events manager, your bookings manager, your night manager, the floor manager, if, if you spend the time with those key people initially, <clears throat> so their brain is thinking the same as yours, then everybody who's beneath them, and I use the word beneath them because if you look at a business as a hierarchy, but nobody's beneath you, you know mm. what I mean? But, but the people who are working below them are going to then feed off them as well. They're going to see how they, yeah. how they work and, um, you know, and, and subconsciously pick a lot of that up, pick up a lot of their traits and then start thinking, 
how they're thinking. And obviously, aside from that, there is, you know, you do have your, your training programs as well, but I believe that the best training is actually sitting there beside the right person, watching, learning, observing. Right. Well, it's pretty, it's pretty special. I'm going to break it down with you a bit more with, with Barb Ambi, but before I do, and uh, we are going to talk about your, your footy career because a lot of people don't know. It's becoming out, it's coming out a bit more now that you're a bit of a, a, a gun footy player when you were younger, but I just want to go into the actual AFL season itself because the post Anzac day is one of the best games I've ever seen. What a game. It was unbelievable. What a game. I mean, how, how have you been, do you watch, watch a lot of AFL, watch a lot of footy? Obviously. Mate, I've, I've, I've you drifted I a bit? don't, I've drifted a bit and even yesterday, yesterday, no, the day before, yeah. yeah. Um, watching the game, I loved it and I was actually sitting there watching it going, oh, geez, I'd Die to be out there. Yes, I die to be out Did there. Miss it? I was going to ask you that. I die to be out there, and I sat there and I thought to myself, "Do you know what? You've actually never ever gotten over the fact that you that you didn't Hit fulfill it. what you really wanted to fulfill." Uh, I, I don't think I ever will. I, I don't think I may. I'm so the you're thing, a soccer, soccer we've background. Exa- we've had this chat before. Yeah, we've got the same background. Yeah, I mean, I I played probably. I don't know if it's worse for me because I actually got a taste of it. Yep. But then injuries and fucking mental breakdowns yep. and stuff. I didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And then I look back and I'm like, oh, I've never not looked back. Even yep. though I'm, I'm better with myself in my life, I've yep. still looked back and I'm like, what could have been? I know, it's I know. Crazy. So, so uh, I absolutely love it. Um, I don't have like one big passion for a particular club. Right. Um, you grow up barracking for a club and then end up playing against that club. Yeah. So you don't, you no longer have that yeah. long passion. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't think I've ever fully gotten over it. Yeah, just watching the other guy. So I can't believe I'm still sitting here thinking this way. How much yeah. do you wish you were 20 again? Yeah, just being I know. like Nick Dacos. You're I like, know. That, that's the dream. I like, know. Why at 12 did, was I not kicking wow. and sharing every day? Wow. You know? Like, it's wow. awesome. Jeez, you can play, can't you? Yeah, he's, Jeez, he's, he's amazing. Play, so. Well, you actually, you probably, it'd be hard for you to follow a team, not only just because of your career, but I mean, you meet half the AFL through your jobs as well. So you have yeah. that loyalty to, to blokes that you meet. You do, you? don't you? You yeah. do. If you see one of your mates roaming around there on the right. ground, it's like, oh, you, you want them to do well over the, you know, the team. So, yeah. um, mate, you, you've been there, done all that. It's uh, <laughs> just in a different in a different sporting field. It's, yeah. uh, um, but the best thing about, you know, sports and everything is the, you know, the different contacts that you make and yeah. just the different life lessons that you gain out of it. Yeah. And, um you know, with my kids, you know, we're really encouraging them to get involved with team sports because- How old are your kids now? Uh, six and nine. Oh, so that's that age where they can start playing? Yeah. So odds kick begins uh, this week or the week after with my son. Oh, awesome. My daughter plays basketball of a weekend and, you know, they uh, they love it. They love it. It's just getting out there, running around, burning off some uh, <laughs> some energy. And, uh, <laughs> More importantly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so that uh, that's probably brings you a little bit full circle watching your son play Auskick. When you go start watching him play footy games, yeah. so that might be a healing process. Who knows? Hopefully so. <laughs> hopefully. hopefully so. Hopefully so. But look, you know, as long as they're out there, you know, living their own mm. life, and that's the one thing that you have to do as a parent as well is mm. you have to say to yourself, well, do you know what? They may be good. They may be average. They might be terrible. Right, yeah. but it's not about that. It's about them giving it a crack and enjoying their life. It's not your life; it's mm-hmm. their life. So you've got to let them do what they want to do. They may not want to play play sport, but yeah. at the moment they are. Uh, yeah, they're both enjoying it, and um, that's good. Which is good. You've spoken quite candidly about your footy journey before, and because I actually think uh, hearing it, there's actually a lot of really good life lessons out of it, and I'm keen to kind of pick apart some of the things maybe you think that experience has benefited you now. But yep. for those that don't know, are you able to share a little bit about? your sort of, I guess, youth footy career into yeah. the draft period and yeah. so forth of, of what happened. As a young bloke, I was- um, Elite. <laughs> I, 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 was, I, was, I was all right. I was yeah. a decent, decent player as a junior. And then going through the, um, the different programs, I was, um, uh, I was first moved to Eastern Rangers, actually. Right. Um, and then I won the, the Rookie of the Year Award there when I was 14, actually. Jesus. And the year after, Oakley Chargers, Calder Cannons, and a few other clubs came into the into the under eighteen competition. Yep. So I was moved from Eastern Ra- uh, Eastern Rangers. I was rezoned to um, uh, to Oakley Chargers. Right, it's a factory. The Chargers. Yeah, and and they're they're a great they're a great organisation now. But same as a new business, when you first start 
it's a brand new club. There's still so many teething problems that they have and structural pro- problems that they have as well. So at that stage, they weren't they weren't dominant back then. They were, you know, it was, there was there was a lot of issues uh, structurally within the um, within the organisation. But I started playing in the under 18s there when I was 15. Which and that, that doesn't happen now, does it? Like 15 year olds playing under 18. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Braden, do they? Like I mean, Nick Dacos, I don't even think did that. Yeah. So, <laughs> which is um, fucking ballsy because they're, yeah, you want to just hit puberty, but yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> man child, man yeah. child. Um, so, uh, and there was a few of us actually. We had a really elite group of blokes my age. There was, a, there was a handful of us who were all doing the same. There was Heath Black was one of them. Uh, oh. There was a, a few other blokes. And, um, and then we went through that program and then in my last year as a, as a top age player in the year that you're supposed to be drafted as an under 18, uh, it was top age 18 year old, yeah. my, I broke my back and missed out on that last year of, um, of playing yeah. under 18s. Yeah. So back then it was a, it was a different time where if you weren't drafted as an 18 year old, pretty yeah. much you you were wiped. You didn't get a second chance. Whereas today, and I've spoken about this before, today they give an older, more mature body yeah, a chance. A chance. Mm. So back then there was, you know, the under 18 comp and then you had the AFL and the AFL had reserves back then. Okay. Mm. So the, the, the Magoos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, if you weren't drafted as an 18 year old, you were doing your best to try and get a spot as a sup list player with right. one of the AFL clubs. The VFA back then, which is now the VFL where, where they, they've now merged the old VFA and the AFL twos, that wasn't around. Um, so, yeah, so anyway, so lucky, luckily enough, at the end of under-18s, I ended up getting a run with um, – I did a pre-season with Collingwood and then off the back of that I went back to my, my local club at Old Ivanhoe and then – I um, got put on a, a thing called a top-up list with um, Sydney Swans and, That's right. and Essendon, not at the same time, year after year. And um, um, back then you were used as a, as a backup uh, twos player, you know, so when they, were, when, they were short of, when they were short of people, you got the call in. So, so that's how it works. And then I ended up playing uh, a number of games with those clubs. And, um, you know, when you're not getting a proper run, and this isn't, when I say not getting a proper run, if you're in, you're out, you're, in, you're yeah, out. It's hard. it's hard to get that continuity. So, so I remember once finishing up, um, Richmond asked me to go on their rookie list. And at that stage, I'd had a gutful as, no. uh, you know, it's like you go it's through the ring. It's like, oh, geez, I've just finished my under 18 competition. Right back. Devastating, didn't get drafted. All right, having a crack here, dropped, having a crack here, dropped. You just get to a point. It's like, you know, I'm over it. And I found a life outside of um, outside of sport, outside of football. And I was making money outside of it as well. Whereas back then, the money, the dedication that you had to, yeah. and I was a very dedicated person, by the way. But by then, I was browned off. There was no money to make while you're going through that process. I was making good money doing what else I was doing, so I was going to be effectively losing money to be yeah. continuing down those lines. So I ended up um, sort of declining the offer and um, and uh, wow. went on my own merry way. So, well, yeah. so how old are you at this point? Would you be at what, early 20s? I think I was 20, 20. Yeah, 20, so 20 what, what were you making? Were you, were you in the event space then or what were you doing at that point to start warranting income, I guess? I sound like a real dickhead here, but I was doing a lot of modelling work back then. Oh, that's yeah. what, of course. Yeah, so I was doing a lot of modelling work back then. And believe it or not, I had hair once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> once upon a time. Mate, yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't know if the camera's yeah. picking up these yeah. piercing blue yeah, eyes, yeah, but they're, so, they're rather intimidating. So I was doing a bit of work back then and um, um, and I was also running, cl- started promoting clubs and everything back then too. Right. So I had the dual income. I was making good money from both angles and- the the club stuff wasn't really um, ideal for a sporting sort of a life, yeah. doing the late nights and drinking and, yeah, you know, till all hours. Um, and then, you know, I had a couple of opportunities to go overseas and do some modelling work overseas. So I went to Milan and lived in Milan for a little space then. So I, I, I got to experience some great things. But, yeah, well, for me, it was like, okay, well, that became my new passion and – I've spoken about this before. When I look back, 
those different contacts that are made from the modelling game, from the club, pub game, from the sporting game, all ended up becoming, you know, so valuable to me for when it came to opening my own venues and everything because those three pockets of people all worked well in the same room. Whatever it is when it comes to running a bar or a club or a pub or whatever it is, you need to have similar sort of people in the in the room, in my opinion, to Absolutely. to make it hum. You know, it's like you don't want to have people who are into death metal, playing death metal music, and then you've got someone who's into um, yeah. classical music. You know, yeah. you need to have the same people in the room at the same time. Oh, but I think, I think uh, you know, with you as well, a very – Rarely people would say a bad word about you and and, and your brother. Got them full. Got them well full, yeah, don't yeah. Got them well full. It comes yeah. back to what you said of all yeah. those pockets of people that were important to maybe your future of your business and stuff, but yeah. the people skills aspect. Mm -hmm. Did you realize young that you had that? Because and, and also, do you think that's something you you just naturally have or you, you kind of learn through what you, Before when I was talking about having good mentors, my mum and dad have always been great people. Yeah. People, people. So, so growing up, um, you know, I used to go to the pubs with my dad and just sit there watching him interact with people, having a beer or, um, you know, seeing how my mum interacted with people when I was working out at the, the markets when I was a kid or um, just in general, my mum and dad are, are beautiful people and anyone who ever is, who, who has ever met them all say the same thing too. They love a love have a drink. They like to have a laugh. They like to. They're just good people, and they've always insta installed um, morals into my brother and I. And you sit there and you observe how they interact with people subconsciously. You just you mm -hmm. just absorb that. So yeah, um, yeah ho hopefully we uh, you know we we try and do the right thing by most people by all people you know all the yeah. time. Hey legends, just a quick break in this episode to thank our partners, Dabble, the gambling agency, where you dabble socially and gamble responsibly. Please only bet what you can and are willing to lose. Now, Dabble is one of the great platforms out there. I absolutely love using it. Very similar to Instagram where you can follow some of the head honchos in the different sports, copy their bets and get some good wins on the board. Now, fortunately for me, I've been working with Dabble for over a year. This year, we are doing a stream every Tuesday night. It's called Jake's Take it's from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., where you can go in the Double app, you can join me. We get guests on every week. We bet on the dogs. We have an absolute ball, and they're talking about sport and cutting up the shop around what's going around town across all codes. So come on down, check it out. Double socially, gamble responsibly, and let's get back into the episode. I'm probably going to try and make you sound a bit like a, a dickhead here because I'm going to ask you to here talk about yourself. Oh, but no, yeah. when you talk about sports, modelling, yep. and obviously the hospitality game, you've done everything at a high level. Mm -hmm. And that comes back to character traits and, yep. and sort of the, the sort of person within. Yep. For, for you, what is it about you you think that's given you that leap in each industry? Because everyone can try these things, but to yep. do it at a high level, yep. and it doesn't always work. You have your downs as well. But yep. for you, what's sort of been the, the metric you would say has been kind of key to you? <sighs> It's, it's a it's a really tricky okay. dickhead time. All right. Yeah. So you obviously, obviously, you need to always have some form of natural ability in whatever field it is that you sort of choose. But I think after that, it all comes down to your work ethic and focus. Mm. I mentioned before, I've got OCD. I've got OCD. So whatever it is that I do, I look at it and I. Bang, I just super focus on that and it's obsessive. Now it can be my best friend and it can be my worst friend as well. So say for example, if you're in a and I look back, I think about, you know, in a slump with footy, having a couple of ordinary games in a row, that would fuck with my head like nothing else. Or if I got dragged off the ground, it would fuck with my head like nothing else. And it would stick. Yeah. It would stick, you know. <laughs> I know so that feeling, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm a bit obsessive compulsive and fully obsessive compulsive. So yeah. that's, that does help me focus and just keep going. So my work ethic with whatever it is that I do is always, I believe, um, more premium than anyone else. I, th I feel as though, yeah, that's, that's not a, a natural ability. That's, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a workhorse. I'll work harder than anybody. I will just keep going and going. Yeah. You need to have that little, you need to have a little bit of natural ability with whatever it is you do. But if you've got the desire to do something and the, um, the work ethic, I believe that anyone can get anything done. Yeah. Do you think the foundations from footy 
assisted business because I always talk yep. about with sport, yep. emotional intelligence. Yep. Like you're getting fucking reamed yep. by footy coaches. Yep. You're putting shit positions and Absolutely. you've got to keep coming back. Absolutely. I, I think it translates a little bit into business. Mate, that is so I tried the best, the best mentor growing up my whole life in my father, my mum and dad, mm. and then say going to refer back to Oakley Chargers, our coach there was the worst mentor you could ever come across. Okay. Just horrendous, zero emotional intelligence whatsoever. Zero. And there was so much talent there who he just absolutely berated and broke down. And I've never seen so many kids actually talented kids leave the sport because of this one particular coach. He was horrendous. Oh, so really? so in terms of <laughs> in terms of when you look at um uh, you know, referring that to business when you refer to emotional intelligence, you need to be able to assess each staff member and work out, oh, well, what's going to get the most out of them? You know, some people respond well from being berated. Yeah. Some people like that. Yeah. I don't think many do. Mm. Um, some people need to be nurtured. Some people need to have their arm put around them. Some people really need, you really need to spend the time with. And so um, in terms of sport, um, yeah, that's, that's a, that there's a key um, correlation there. Um, in terms of sport as well, you need to be very structured and regimented. Yeah. Um, very on, dedicated. On time. On time. Sure. If you're late, you're letting the entire team yeah, down. You just get fined because you get up, mind you was, up the ranks. Mind you, I was late today. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, but, you know, you're, you're working in a team environment. Um, whereas now owning the business, I'm the coach. You know what I mean? I'm the coach of the team, but, I instill into the key positions, the lead management, um, these different qualities of, um, and yeah, everyone backs each other up. Everyone works together. And the other thing is business is my new sport. It's my competitive. Yeah. yeah I want to be, I want to be better than them. I want to be better than them. Yeah. See, that's for, for me, I think why I like a test sport and business similarities is once I got into sort of working in business where I start, started to find I had an edge was when there was competition. Yeah. And it's the same yeah. for you when you just said that. Like yeah. you need that that kind of, you, you're used to it's that. It's your juice, isn't yeah. it? It's your juice. It's like, all right, let's go. You yeah. know, I still get that. I still get that feeling sometimes. Oh, fucking come on, let's go. You know, <laughs> but you can't run, you can't run out onto the ground. Like we said, my brother and I will always tell we have white line fever the moment we cross the line. <laughs> did, like, did you yeah, really? You yeah, did both yeah, of you? Yeah, both of us. Man, yeah, I've, I've yeah, never seen yeah. either of you have that yeah, side. That, yeah, that's so unbelievable. We, we both Sport walk, brings that out in people though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, we both walk onto the field and you just turn like that. And, wow. um, it just yeah, gets your juices going. So do you reckon modelling caught you in that period after footy? Because for me, when I came out of soccer, I yep. went through a down period of like, yeah. who am I? What am I doing? Absolutely. Did you experience that or was modelling kind of straight away shift your focus and you've got something else that's on the Mate, go? Mate, it's depressing. It's, it's depressing. Hard, it is it? depressing. And, and to anyone who's gone through the sporting game, it, everyone goes through it. Mm. Everyone. Um, it is. It's depressing. But luckily for me that I found something that, I was interested in, yeah, and it's not, you know, you sound like a dickhead talking about modeling, but, but it was something that all of a sudden I was working in, in Milan. I was like, like how awesome. good's this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was working in Japan. I was working in, in these different places. Like fucking how good's this? Yeah. So it was, it was, I wasn't necessarily enjoying having my photo taken or doing a TV commercial or something, but I was enjoying the people who I was meeting. I was enjoying the travel that I was, you know, gaining out of it. Mm. Um, I was enjoying a lot of other elements about it. And, um, um, yeah. It's special. Well, let's talk Bar Bambi because um, I was mentioned it a few times on the podcast already, but yep. it hasn't been around aw awfully long if you compare other venues in Melbourne. But last, uh, 2022 won – Best bar in Australia, yep. which is for you would have been massive. It was good. When yeah. you were drawing up the concept of it, yep. um, did you know it would fly? You always back yourself. You always back yourself. But you've heard of different business people you speak to and there's always that moment of doubt. There's always that moment of doubt. And because it took so long for us to get the doors open, there were so many moments of doubt. And we were also building during – COVID lockdown as well. Oh, so we're like, oh my God, what are we doing here? We've dropped an absolute bomb into this place. <laughs> um, are we ever going to be able to open? Oh, do no. we do we continue to build or do we just tear up the money that we've 
buried into the place to date um, and cut our, cut our losses. So there was so much doubt um, that the business people do have. I always, you know, I, I back myself always, always looked at things and thought, do you know what? There's a real gap in the market. I was looking at where the market was going. I was looking at what I was doing overseas. I was looking, I've always done things based on also what is it that I would like. I think if I would like something, if I would like something, surely someone else out there wants to as well. Yeah. Surely someone else will like it as well. So we're, everything that we've ever done has been based on what is it that we would like and then we target people mm. who are similar to ourselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. similar to myself, same sort of background all of a sudden where they're having a drink at the bar, um, someone else. It's very similar kind of people. Yeah. How, for, for those that don't or haven't been to Barbamba yet, because we obviously have interstate listeners that, that aren't in Melbourne, can you explain it to them? Like the, the sort of atmosphere, the ambience? Because yeah. for me- I know it's a bar, it's a restaurant, but it, it's actually an experience as well. Yeah. Especially when you tie the two together. I mean, it's it's, it's insane. Yeah. So the, the whole concept is you can, you can go there either for like being in the location we are, we're just off Flinders Lane and being on in that key pocket, there's some after workers, there's some great restaurants and bars around us as well. So you can come to us. We open at 5 p.m. You can come to us for an after work drink, just go and sit at the bar, have a couple of quiet drinks or you can sit there and have a nibble, or you can sit down in our restaurant area and have dinner. Um, but it starts off as a bar restaurant, and as the night is progressing, the entertainment is also progressing. So our piano that starts early with the nice background music turns into a DJ. The lights that are a little bit brighter get a little bit darker. The volume of the music gets a little bit louder. And by the end of the night, people are up and dancing around their tables. You know yeah. what I mean? So, <laughs> exactly. From six so, to 12, yeah. that's what I mean, the experience. Yes. It's like you grow with the place. That's it. So, yeah. so being a small <laughs> venue, well, everyone's got a short attention span. So yeah. if you offer just dining mm. and there's plenty of places that offer fantastic dining in the area and I, I love so many of the places in, in the area. You know, you've got Grill Americano, you've got yeah. uh, Pastuzzo, you've got Gimli, you've got a lot of great so, places. Yeah you know, in a stone throw from us. So there's some great places you can go to. And they're great operators, those people. For us, um, our our background is in entertainment. So we need to have our point of difference. So we merge that food and entertainment. So if you go to one of those other venues, it's a completely different experience to if you're coming to a, um, a Bar Bambi. Mate, it's, it's incredible. So for, for you, what were, I know you talk about the one percenters, but when did Bar Bambi actually open up when was sort of day dot was it 2021 okay what are we now 2021 yeah 2021 so So in that short space of time you went from best bar to australia yeah 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 so we opened in october 2021 what what do you think like for you guys is it because you're focusing on these one percenters it's because you've got this kind of like really unique setup it's almost like a bit of a 1950s 60s vibe in there and then it's like but it's modern it's combination it's a combination it's it's a combination of um it's a unique offering. There's no other venues that are doing what we're doing in Melbourne, but obviously now people have seen it. They're, people will start copying the business model, and you know what? That's that's life. That's business. You know that that's how things work. Um, so first of all, it's a unique offering. The um, the the people who are there as well, they're part of the experience. The food's good. The it's venues amazing. the venues beautiful. The drinks are good. And, you know, it's, it's a, and yeah, all these little one percenters, it all, it all adds up. It all adds up. You're almost match hardened as well, in a sense, for Bar Bambi because of your career coming up. So you probably feel you, everything you're doing is knowledgeable with experience. It's not like you're kind of guessing, you know, what's going to work. And you know, I mean, obviously Eve was a a catalyst in that. Yeah. I can't not have you on the podcast and not talk about Eve because for anyone that's probably 30 plus. Yeah would have experienced that as a go-to nightclub in, in regards to like South Bank in yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. Um, how did that come about? And obviously the longevity of it for it to be successful. Yeah. It's not, it's not easy to do in a club space. Mate, it, it was, look, we originally planned to have it for 12 months and flick it off and we kept it for, oh, no way. yeah, and we kept it for 10 years. So it's, it's, um, it's, it, it was a great place. When I look back, I was so young. When we started, I was 25 or 26. Is that young? In wow. absolute <laughs> debt to my <laughs> eyeballs, right? Um, and um, it was a it was an institution. We because we were young, the people who were you know 
young sports people, the young musicians and everything, they felt comfortable being with other young people as well who were high achieving people. Mm. Um, and the, the one thing that my brother and I have always done is we, we try and make it feel like home. You know, we want people to always feel comfortable. We, we want to keep the dickheads out of the place. Mm. We want, um, yeah, we want people to come in and always have that sense of familiarity. We want them to come in and feel like they own the place, yeah. you know? Um, so over time you spend a lot of time there and, and, and make people feel comfortable there and introduce that one to that one, that one to that one, that one to that one. In time, what eventually happens is people start coming down on their own. Oh, yeah, I've finished work. I'll come down on my own. I know I'll bump into him. I know yeah, I'll bump into them. That's you know Bob Abbey I mean? right now. Yeah, yeah. So I can go there on my own, guarantee. You know, you know you're going you're gonna, to oh, oh, I'll head lock. You yeah, come to have a beer with me in the corner. Leave, yeah. it, leave it to I am and be mm, fine. Yeah, mm, absolutely. Yeah, so so I, I think it's that, um, you know, that sort of family environment that we try to create. So was Eve the first cab off the rank for you in regards to that space? Or were you already in the hospitality no, no, game? So before, that, space? before that, I had a place called Boutique. Oh, you Boutique so, is Yeah, so, so I started Boutique. I, just... I was a minor shareholder there, by the way. Okay. So I was, um, the first place I had was a place called Aqua Bar. Mm -hmm. um, my brother, myself, and a couple of other mates. And we had that for a short time. We knew how to fill the place, but we didn't know the ins and outs of, you know, the, legalities and whatnot. So that was a good learning curve for us. And then um, Boutique had just opened and it was struggling. And the guy who was my, who owned it at the time, he approached me and asked me if I'd want to come in and go into partnership with him. So I said, yeah, cool. So I bought into the place and boom, off it took the success of the place. And we did well. I was there for a couple of years, I think I was. And then I sold out of there and he stayed on and I went and started Eve. So yeah. we've had a, we've had some good, you know, we've had some good success in the space over the years. Um, but like sport, you're only as good as your last game, mate. <laughs> oh, you are only as ahead. good as your last <laughs> game, mate. So <laughs> I was thinking about this weekend, I'm going to make sure we're following it. You know? Man, I bet you've seen some crazy shit. You've seen it all, mate. Yeah. But I mean, I don't, I, do want to put you on the spot with what you can share, but what's some of the, because in the clubbing scene, I mean, it's yeah. pretty unique. You, yeah. you get some rough, rough cards handed to you. I mean, what's, <laughs> what's something you could share with, across the journey? Because Nick Russian's eyes are, they, they need a therapy. Of they need therapy. I, can't, I actually don't think I can say that. That's, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Let me come back to that. Yeah, this is, this is a boring one. answer, but, but let me come back to you because the things that come to my mind are, um, <laughs> Yeah, probably not to PG. Yeah, um, well, that's why, yeah, I mean, I am yeah, looking for an yeah, answer know, beyond know, PG. But, but, well, I'll give you an easy even, one while yeah. you think, but most famous or well-known people that have come into your clubs that you've rubbed shoulders with, that you've been yeah, able to we've, give we've had a lot of an authentic there. experience. Uh, Britney Spears. Britney Spears, wow. One Direction. Oh, they were Kanye, massive. Kanye, they came here. Kanye West. What? Um, Serena Williams, Usain Bolt, but... Out of all of them, and this is actually perfect timing, out of all of them who have been to our bars and clubs and things over the years, I have never seen a bigger response than from Gordon Ramsay, who came to Bambi two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I I've saw that. I've never, ever seen a bigger response in my entire life. I was, I, I was blown away. He's walked down into the restaurant. The entire restaurant stood up and started give, gave him a standing applause. They started cheering him. What? I've never seen anything like it. So- um, how did he handle that? Was he like humbled? Because like, he'd be he's like, like fuck, "Fuck off!" He goes, "Fuck me! What the fuck? What the fuck have I walked into here?" You know, oh. but it was a, it was a genuine legend. Actually, genuine I'm gonna ask you just on that. Fucking, we all know kitchen nightmares. Yeah. Bambi's always had great food, yeah. but if I'm the chef, I'm yeah. a bit jittery on the fry pan for Mate, that Everyone one. shit themselves. Yeah. Everyone shit themselves. Well, how did that process go? Everyone like, shit themselves. Oh, the chef goes, oh, fuck, it's gone and Ramsey just walking in. I said to him, I said, mate, I said, everyone's on there. He's just waiting to have it, getting a good spray from it. He started laughing. So, but look, he had, a, he had a great time. He said, mate, this is a genius concept, he said, which was very nice that. of him. And um, he said, mate, I'm in town for a, a few weeks. I'll, I'll, pop down if I'm, uh, you know, if we get another night off. So oh. he was a good bloke. He was a great bloke. Very humble. Uh, he's a self-made man. He's worked his ass off and and he's real. I think that's what people like about when you see him on those shows. He's he's real, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, he's, uh, yeah, scary, uh, kind of scary real at times. Yeah. You yeah. know, actually, funny enough, he was a, he was apparently going to be a professional footballer. 
Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, he was playing for Rangers in Scotland. He was like okay. a very good. And then he somehow made a flip to the kitchen. Yeah, wow. So, which is pretty, wow. uh, pretty unique. What a but, story. What a yeah. story. Um, I'm kind of giving you these direct ones towards the end here because right. it's just kind of like interesting for the listeners because I, I just think, but is there is there a night, one night or a particular uh, event that for you is like, fuck, that, that's the best. That's, that's the one best of the best night. experiences that's I've ever had. Night. Man, I come out every week and I'm like, this is one of the greatest nights ever. One of the greatest nights ever. I think when you were there last, that was when, my greatest yeah, night yeah, yeah, for, yeah. When you, you, you must have some like... <laughs> Some some big ones because uh, for those that um, don't know the AFL Premiership teams are always at uh, they're always at Eve, at Eve, Eve like yeah, a, with their yeah, medals yeah, with their yeah, jerseys so you've yeah, seen some so, fucking so look so they are definitely the standout nights for us anytime we're asked this question we we always give the same answer the 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 grand final nights at Eve were always the best ones for us we had you know Hawthorne had their party there West Coast Eagles had their party there Collingwood did. Um, Sydney probably I think Sydney did really Sydney was definitely the best one that we've ever yeah, had you that was because there were a lot of lot of old mates a couple of boys who I played with as well yeah. and uh, more importantly we had a record bar take that <laughs> night <laughs> there, we there we go that's awesome that's awesome that's I mean but for, for you with the business obviously the commercial side naturally everyone loves but the I feel like the people aspect the people you meet that would kind of be a bit of the glue for you and and Dan as well in regards to like making sense of why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, mate, like we love it. Yeah, mate, we do, we love it. We meet a lot of good people. Um, I think whatever you do in life, you, you're going to meet some people you get along with, you're going to meet some people who you don't get along with, right? Mm. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we, we've met some great people over the journey and uh, we still continue to meet a lot of great people and, yeah, we love it. You know, there's, there's nothing better than walking into the bar and you've got all your mates there, the place is, everything's running smoothly, there's the – we have an overcrowded. It's not a. It's not. It's not a quiet night. It's not overcrowded. It's just a good night, and it's all your mates, and everyone's having mm. fun. The music's right. Everyone's in a good mood, and you're having a drink with your mates. It's a good time, you know. Right. And and yeah, we love it. I feel like you've mastered it because I know you're a very big family family man, and um, obviously you and you and your partner have been in the spotlight for twenty odd years with the work she does and what you do. Yeah. How do you how do you manage the balance of being like a good father? And obviously yep. maximizing your, your workload as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because I imagine that's probably maybe a bit of a daily struggle at times or. It's a juggle. It's yeah. definitely a juggle, but the kids always do come first. Yeah. Um, sometimes, however, you just need to get some, get work done. So mm. you know, I, I've set some rules for myself now that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm with the kids. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That's it. I'm with the kids. So if something pops up, it's very, very rare for me to go to something else on yeah. one of those nights. It's okay. No, that's it. If I'm going to do something, um, it needs to be on a Thursday, Friday or a Saturday night, which are the nights that I work. Yeah. Um, because otherwise it's too easy to go weeks on end without seeing your kids. And you know, the I, I keep referring back to my parents, how good, role models they were for me, that was, they spent so much enormous time, quality time with us. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I have to make sure that I do the same for my kids and, and set the, set the, the right boundaries for them and show them the way in life. And uh, so far, so good. They're really good kids and you know, everything you do is for your family. Everything that I do is for, for my family. So. Well, well said. Well, a common, we, a big part of our audience is definitely the bracket sort of people between the age of 18 to 30. Yep. Now I'm, I'm almost turning 30. I, th well, I thought I knew out. everything look when out. I was younger. Look right? out. So I'm, this question's like, I'm, I'm interested in, but yep. for those listening and who are in that age bracket, I mean, it's kind of a dilemma of, do I live, live the maximum of my life while I can before I get, you know, kids and a family? Yep. Or should I be working and setting myself up? Like with your wisdom and experience, what, what would be your advice to that sort of age bracket? I don't know if I've got any wisdom, mate. Well, because, <laughs> I've, I've I mean, got a little bit of experience. <laughs> I don't know if I'm wiser. <laughs> uh, so, so the question is, would I suggest for you to go and live your life like, or yeah. try and set yourself up work-wise for the future? So yeah, when, that you, when you're questions? just kind of that, that early 20 period, mid-20s. Mate, I've always been focused from day one about setting myself up for Love life. That. Always. Love from, that. from day one. From, yeah. from when I was younger, I always, I remember coming out of school, I always wanted to get out, make money and set myself up for later on in life. I always wanted to do that. So I think it's about, you, you can't be just all work though at the same time. You need to find <coughs> some balance. And my work as it turned out, you know, was, you know, it was, it was pretty unique. I was lucky to live my life while I was 
living in Milan or, do you know what I mean? So I was mm. lucky there. That's, that's luck. Um, then when it came to going out and partying and everything like kids do when you're 18 to, you know, to 45. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 18 to, 18 to, yeah. 18 to, uh, 18 to 30, you yeah. know. Um, I was fortunate that I was making a living out of doing that as well. But I always, I was always focused on setting myself up. So I was hoping you gave me a black and white answer there. So I appreciate that. That that was gold. Yeah. Just before we give you sort of the the final question that we always do on the show. Yeah. It's funny actually, because you explained to me recently that, um, Nick Russian or Russian yeah. is actually Italian. Correct. So for years before I met you, I just thought you were like a gangster. A Russian, like Russian gangster. gangster yeah, I told you, right. with yeah. the name. Yeah. But so you've got actually an Italian background and it's, it's Russian. Yes. Yeah, so just, just to clear that up. Just to clear that up. Just to clear that up. No one thinks what I Just to clear that up. He's not a, he's not a Russian yeah, mobster. Yeah, got, <laughs> he's an got, Italian businessman. When that Nick the Russian got killed, I got, can't tell you how many phone calls I got. Oh, I'm serious. Oh, yeah, I know. oh wow. I can imagine. Wow. I can imagine. Wow. Wait, so you, oh, people, <laughs> I can only imagine. So- um, dad's born in, uh, a place called Trieste in Italy, came to Australia when he was three and a half, four, mm. uh, our backgrounds are like Italian, Croatian, um, in that Northern part of Italy, the surnames aren't necessarily finishing with a the vowel. There right. are names that end in N, okay. but also the story is going back hundreds of years ago, they used to call somebody by their occupation or where they were from. Like, oh, there's John the goldsmith or there's Nick the Russian because you're from Russia, you know. Right. So, so at some stage we could, well, this is the story, whether it's true or not, I don't know. <laughs> what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? <laughs> um, we could have been Russian once upon a time. There so, we go. And I married a Russian. So there, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a kicker. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, mate, it's been a pleasure. Now, to round out, we always ask our guests this question, and it's probably one of the first times I actually ask someone in business because mm-hmm. we attest sort of three key traits to people in sport and business. Um, all three are kind of critical, but we just want the one that resonates with you yep. the most on your journey. So it's out of resilience, drive, or ambition. Which one was probably at the top of that pile for you to be sort of Nick Russian is to, uh, who is today? It's a tough They're, one. It's, 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 it's actually all three of them. Uh, you need all three. You need all three. Resilience. I'm a very resilient person. I think resilience. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Probably resilience. I think resilience is probably the one that's trumping the most, which is really interesting because mm. there's a there's a lesson in that mm. for me. So to hearing mm. hearing people, I mean, obviously breaking your back. Yep. All the footy stuff. Yep. It's just dry. Dry. The resilience is yep. there. Just keep going. Yeah. Just keep, keep going. going. Keep, keep going. But they but they 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 are the three characteristics you need. Yeah. Well. Nick, mate, you know I love you. I love Bar Bambi. I love everything you stand for. You're a great bloke. For everyone uh, at home that hasn't been to Bar Bambi, get down there. You have a great night. Take some friends. You'll get looked after. It's a beautiful place. But thank you for coming on the Unlaced Podcast, mate. Thank you for having me. Thank Appreciate you very it, much. Thank you, sir. Good on you, mate. Thank you. We go. We'll see you next week, guys. Thank we'll you. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>